welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Lisa, also known as La Dolce Lisa. And yet again, I'm going to put the term dolce to good use today because I am going to be making an Italian dessert, cannoli. Now cannoli are basically a Sicilian dessert and my version is also going to be Sicilian inspired because I'm going to be using ricotta, but not just that, also mascarpone for the filling. So I'm going to be teaching you how to make a delicious homemade filling. And on top of that, even extra, I'm actually going to be showing you how to make the shells from scratch. So we are going to be making the cannoli dough, we're going to be rolling it out and we're going to be frying it and then we're going to be filling it with this delicious homemade filling and then topping it with a few specialty items to just make them look that much more festive and beautiful for the occasion. Of course, if you don't have the time to be making this dough because it is quite labor intensive, you can just use this delicious filling for store-bought shells. But I'm telling you guys, if you do go the extra way and make these shells, from scratch, you will just feel so much better and so much more accomplished and they really are truly delicious. So this recipe is definitely a hit. I've made it before and everyone keeps asking me for the recipe. So here it is guys. But I should also mention that if you would like the written recipe with listed ingredients and directions, please visit ladolcelisa.com. I will list this recipe in my description box down below. That way it is much easier to follow along with as well. So, without further ado, let's get started and let's first make the cannoli dough for the shells. So first things first, I have in this bowl one whole egg and one egg yolk. Don't throw away the egg whites because we are actually going to be using that later to seal the cannoli dough with. So save the whites aside, but right now in this bowl is one egg yolk and one whole egg from a large egg. And to that as well, I have one fourth of a cup of Marsala wine, which is basically four tablespoons of Marsala wine right in here. And I also have one tablespoon of white vinegar. You can use any kind of white vinegar, obviously not balsamic vinegar, but you can also use apple cider vinegar, which is what I had at home. And I just added one tablespoon right here. So this is our wet mix and we are going to set that aside for now. I have a food processor. A food processor is so important because we are going to be making the dough in here. This is such a handy tool and this will save you so much time when it comes to preparing the actual cannoli dough. So in the food processor right now, I actually have a cup and three fourths of flour that is just under two cups. I find that that works best. And I also have here a dry mix that I'm going to pop right in the food processor. In this dry mix, I have two tablespoons of icing sugar, one teaspoon of cocoa powder, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, ground cinnamon of course, half a teaspoon of instant coffee, half a teaspoon of salt, and one fourth of a teaspoon of baking soda. So we're going to be adding this right to the flour mixture. Now I'm going to be giving this a quick pulse just to incorporate all of the dry ingredients. Now that all the dry mix is incorporated, I'm going to be adding two tablespoons of butter. Now we're just going to pulse the butter a bit until it is well combined. So now the wet ingredients, I'm going to be adding those eggs that I mentioned, the marsala wine and the vinegar, right into the food processor. Now with the lid back on, we are basically just going to pulse this until a dough forms. You'll see that it looks like wet sand at first, but as you keep pulsing, it's going to turn into a lump of dough. Now, do you see how easy that was? Much easier than mixing by hand. So that's why I love this food processor. I'm just going to clean my surface and lightly flour. So on this lightly floured surface, we are just going to be taking a little bit more flour and kneading our dough by hand for basically a minute or two. You just wanna work the dough with clean hands and a clean surface. So I kept some light flour on the surface of the dough and now we're just popping this in the plastic wrap covering it tightly, and we are going to be putting this in the fridge to rest for one hour. In the meantime, while this is resting in the fridge, we are going to clean up and get ready to prepare our cannoli filling. in my handy KitchenAid stand mixer. If you do not have this, you can use an electric mixer or you can honestly even just use your hand. This just makes it so much easier. And I'm going to be using this paddle attachment. That's just my favorite attachment to use when I'm making thick creams. Okay, for the filling, this is probably my favorite part. It is so easy to come together and this is delicious. Whereas most people might use a pastry cream or even just a ricotta cream by itself, 
I use a ricotta and mascarpone cream. I just strained it to basically take about a tablespoon or two of the juice out, but that's not important because the mascarpone is going to really thicken this filling. So I'm using mascarpone. Find your favorite brand of mascarpone. Not every two brands are alike. Sometimes you can get one that is not so great. It's important that it is nice and thick and it basically has the thickness, as you can tell, of like a really nice cream cheese basically. So this is almost like an Italian cream cheese, except unlike ours, this isn't as tangy. It is more of like that fresh cream taste. So it's really delicious in desserts. So I have 500 grams of ricotta and 500 grams of mascarpone. So first things first, this delicious mascarpone. So 500 grams. Let's give this mascarpone a quick mix just to cream it and loosen that up a bit. That literally took maybe like 10 seconds. Now I'm going to be adding this ricotta. It is strained. You don't have to strain it if you're really running out of time. I just did it to take about a tablespoon of moisture out, but it's not important because this, unlike a typical cannoli filling with just ricotta, this is going to be super thick because of that thick and delicious mascarpone. The most important thing when you're making a cannoli cream is that you really don't want it to be runny. You want it to be nice and thick and to hold its consistency. Now that I added the ricotta, let's also give that a quick mix. Now that the ricotta and mascarpone have come together nicely, we are going to be adding the icing sugar. That took about 20 seconds to mix up. I use about two cups of icing sugar. I would say use a cup and a half, taste it, and then if you need a bit more, add the last half a cup. Now, of course, start mixing this on low. So scraping the side of the bowl to make sure all the ingredients are incorporated. And now I'm going to be adding a couple of shakes of cinnamon. I would say maybe even like one fourth of a teaspoon and as well a tiny little pinch of salt. I always like to add a little bit of salt to everything that I make. Next I'm going to be adding some rum extract. This is of course optional. I just find that rum extract gives it that nice Italian flavor. I'm going to be adding one tablespoon. Now the zest of one lemon straight into the bowl. I think I'll do about half of this lemon since it's so large and give that a quick mix as well. We are going to be adding these chocolate chips to the mix. You can of course add any kind of chocolate chips you like. You can even finally chop up your chocolate chips. I happen to find these mini little tiny tiny baby chips and I don't want a lot because I just want this, the flavors of the filling to stand out rather than have it be such a chocolate chip base. So adding that one fourth of a cup of mini chocolate chips and just giving that a quick whip to incorporate. Now is the best part, trying the filling, making sure we don't need to add any more sugar or zests. <laughs> mm. This tastes like Italy, this is so good. So this is going to be a delicious Sicilian cannoli filling. I'm just going to be putting this in a little container and popping this in the fridge. So it's good to keep this in the fridge while we are rolling out our cannoli because that takes a while, maybe even an hour or so. So by the time that this is sitting in the fridge for an hour, our cannoli shell should be ready to go and ready to pipe up. So I just took this dough out of the fridge. It's been in there for one hour and now I'm going to cut it into quarters. We are going to be rolling the dough through the pasta machine to get these nice thin strips of dough. Okay, so with these little shapes that we quartered, I'm just going to be flattening them out with just my hand basically because we want them to be nice and thin so that they actually fit through the pasta machine to do the rest of the work. If you find that at any point your dough is a little bit too sticky, you can just always add a touch more flour to the dough. That way nothing sticks and it's much easier to handle. And now I'm going to be putting these through the pasta machine. So let's start at the biggest notch and then we are going to be gradually working our way over to either the smallest or the second smallest notch on this pasta maker. Okay, so I just ran the dough through the one. Now let's keep going until we get to the last stage. So you can see this, this dough is starting to look more thin, but this will look super thin by the time we are done. So here we have the final product. Look how nice and thin this is. I had also done these cannolis once by using the complete thinnest notch that you can on this pasta machine, but that might almost be too thin. Traditionally, these are a little bit thicker than that. So I did these at the second last notch on this pasta machine, and it created such a nice, thin, light, airy dough. Mm, these actually smell so good already. So what we are going to do at this stage is now cut the dough out. So I left the pasta machine is still in place because sometimes with the leftover dough, I do re-roll it. You can use a cookie cutter, but I'm just going to be using a glass and I'm going to be cutting out 
the round shapes of the cannoli trying to be as considerate as I can so that I don't waste too much dough but like I said you can always re-roll the dough a bit you see this is exactly what we want just a perfect little round shape I'm going to just lightly flour some more of the surface here and just place it down those we will be using in a second so I'm going to continue doing the same thing for all this dough Okay guys, so I cut out all of the cannoli from the dough. We have about two dozen. I added my scraps together and now I'm just gonna do the same thing that I've been doing. I'm gonna give them some passes through and I'm going to cut these out. Hopefully we'll get out about another six from just the scraps alone. But I just wanted to also mention that these cannolis with this specific cutter that I have, which is actually just a glass, these ended up being about three inches. I like them to be a little bit on the smaller side. Okay, so I rolled out my dough. I even used the scraps from my first initial batch and I actually rolled out eight more, which is great. So I have these stainless steel cannoli cylinders. You can't make cannoli without this. This is what gives the cannoli shell its shape. What I'm going to be doing is taking these a three inch little cannoli doughs and rolling them and shaping them like this. And to help keep its shape is going to be that egg white left over from earlier. This is what we need it for. So what we're going to be doing is lightly brushing this with the egg whites and rolling it. So this is how I roll it. So once they are rolled like this, you can just pop these in your oil. Now I am frying this in vegetable oil. You can use canola oil or any frying oil of your liking. It is helpful if you have a digital thermometer. So about 180 to 190 degrees works best for frying the cannoli. If you don't have this, just be very careful that they, you don't burn these. So I would fry no more than one to two at a time of these cannolis because they do like space. Now the amount of oil just depends on how big your frying pan is. My pan is quite large, but you do want to just put enough oil to make sure that once you plop these in, that the oil will actually cover the top of these as well. Popping these in for about one to two minutes. Now to pull these out, I actually use these two large forks. I just find that it works best. Sometimes tongs can slip through. So these large forks, help to keep it very nice and stable. Now when we pull these out, we are going to be placing these on just a bed of paper towels or napkins to drain the oil from the actual shell. And then once these shells kind of come to room temperature, I will show you how I pop these off. We only have four of these and we are going to be frying one to two at a time. So usually as soon as the last one's done frying, the first one is ready to come off and be rolled again. It's just a basic little process that you'll eventually just get the hang of and you'll pretty soon be a pro. You're gonna be frying some, rolling some, taking some off the cylinder. So pretty soon you're gonna be a cannoli professional. It's been in the fridge for probably like an hour or two. What I'm going to do is place this in a piping bag. I already just plopped my piping bag right in this cup. So let's put this delicious arricotta mascarpone filling right in this piping bag. Now I'm just going to snip the tip off. So about maybe an inch thickness. I'm going to take one of these beautiful cannoli shells and we are going to fill them. So a little bit of filling on one side and a little bit of filling on the other side. So I'm just going to be filling about three or four of these right now because they are best served honestly freshly piped right away but if you clearly can't do that just try to pipe them as close as possible to the event. You kind of just have to pipe them fresh for when you're ready to eat them that way the shell still stays crispy and the filling is nice and fresh. Now that these are filled here comes the fun part decorating them. What I have here are some of those mini chocolate chips that you'd already have seen me use. I also have some chopped up pistachios. What I did was I put these in a plastic bag and I just smashed them a little bit. And I also have these cherries that I cut in half. Now what I usually like to do is maybe dip one in the chocolate chips and maybe pop a little cherry on the back. So we have one. Another one I like to dip in the pistachio and then I'll also pop a little cherry on there. And then you can mix and match. How delicious does this look? But we are not done yet. What we have is some icing sugar. And now you really need to do this because they make your cannolis look so much more elegant and beautiful. So with a lovely dusting of icing sugar and all these pretty ingredients on top, I think that these cannolis look absolutely beautiful. Now what's left to do but to eat them, right? 
So here we go. Let's pick one out. This one is one that I made two of. Let's try this beautiful baby right here. Cherry side. Mmm. Can you hear that crunch? These are absolutely perfect. They're thin and crisp. That filling is not too sweet. It's delicious. It's fresh. It's cool. It is like, oh, this is the best, guys. You really have to give this recipe a try. This filling is like no other, and these shells are absolutely perfect. You can see a little bit of the bubbles on them, which is exactly what we want. These are so good. Mmm, we can't stop eating. <laughs> Please don't forget to check out ladolcelisa.com. I will have pictures, and I will have the written ingredients and recipe on there for you guys as well, so that it's so much easier to follow along to. This does take a lot of work. It is labor intensive. But if you have a special occasion, maybe you're hosting or maybe you're going somewhere special and you really want to bring someone a special treat, give these a try. I know you'll love them. So guys, thank you so much for watching and until next time, I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys! Bon appétit!